All right, in this module, we're going to go through a demonstration to begin to talk about the mechanics of fracture in materials. So let's get to the kind of the prompt here. So in this one, I'm gonna need you to do some crafting for me. Uh, so you can see here, I have strips of paper. So what I'm gonna have you do is cut some strips of paper and make them uh, roughly the same length and width as you can see here. So cut them with a pair of scissors and leave one alone, just uh, length and width. Um, and then for the second one, uh, put a notch like you see here in it. Uh, and then for the third one, put a notch here, a narrow, uh, a thin one. So this is kind of a wide one. This is a thin one. And then kind of make them the same depth into the material. So you have to do a little cutting on this. but uh, And then label them one, two, and three. And so these are your tensile specimens. So what I'm gonna have you do is your hands are gonna be the tensile um, instrument. So they're gonna measure force. And so you're gonna have to you know, pull these apart, make them fracture, and make a mental note of which one requires the most force based on your kind of uh, ability to break them. So you're gonna you know, have to get to, to, uh, to uh, uh, do a just a, a mental ranking of how much force you think it took to break uh, break each one of these um, And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fracture all three of them and you're gonna rank the forces required to fracture so one the highest uh, three the lowest and I want you to also note the location of fracture. So did it happen um, at the flaw where you're gripping or elsewhere. And so go to your quiz uh, after you've done that and put in your rankings. Uh, so whether one, two, or three, um, and then also note the location uh, in the quiz as well. And then come back and I'll go through the demo uh, and we can kind of compare notes. All right, so we're here. I've got the three test samples in front of me. And so I'm gonna go ahead and break them for you. Um, and so we'll kind of compare notes to what we got. So I'll start with the first one. So again, it's a tensile sample. And so I'm going to do it sideways like this. And I'm basically just going to hold it on the numbers and then pull, try to pull it apart, right? So that's what I'm going to do here. And so when I'm doing this, I'm making a note in my head of relatively how much force did it take as I was pulling this apart, right? Okay, so I'll start. Okay, so you could kind of see me struggling there, which is why I was going back and forth, right? And you also notice that um, I got it to fail here, right where, pretty much right where I was holding it, right? Okay, so I'll put that one back and I'll go to two. All right, I'll start with that. Do the same thing, hold it sideways, uh, hold it here on the numbers and then basically pull it apart in the same way and then make my note of how much force. All right, so it didn't nearly have to struggle as much and you'll notice that it fractured right there at the flaw. So let me put that one back. All right, let me go to the last one, same procedure. So hold it on the numbers, uh, do it in tension and then note the relative force, all right? All right, so really didn't struggle at all with that. And the same thing, it broke at that fracture. All right, so what I did here, you might've gotten slightly different results. Um, the main differences uh, that I've seen in the past is that when you fracture number one, you may get the location kind of anywhere. Uh, but if you have to put a lot of force into it, sometimes it happens right there at the, the grip. Uh, but you'll kind of notice that mostly uh, it's perpendicular, right? So it's brittle fracture, right? The, it didn't deform at all. It just, it was very brittle. And for me, this one, number one, the force was the highest, right? It took me a lot of force to break that relative. And then this one was the next, and then this one was the least. So the interesting point here, and, and let me just kind of go through the fracture. So these, uh, same thing, they, they broke perpendicular to my tensile axis, which is here and here, right? So mostly perpendicular and relatively smooth, right? So there's a the little bit of uh, jagged nature, but it's relatively smooth. 
And so what we're going to talk about in this next module and with fracture mechanics is what is this notch doing, right? So these notches, uh, I may have not gotten them perfectly, right? But they're roughly the same distance in. So they basically they have the same, roughly the same depth into the sample. But this one, which was more narrow, um, was easier than this one, right? Even though this has more material taken out, right? So that might seem a little counterintuitive. And so we're going to look at why this occurs and what does this notch serve as. So that's what we're going to do in the next section. But I wanted you to kind of do this to get a feel for what we're going to do um, in the next modules. All right, I wanted to come back to the slides real quick so I can show you uh, in a year past what happened with the same experiment. So I had the three samples here and uh, same uh, general trend with the force. It The highest force was the first sample, this one, then this one was the next, and then this one. And after tensile testing, you'll see the same results for two and three. However, the fracture occurred at the top grip instead of the, the bottom down here like it did before. So again, there may be some variation with the location of this, but you don't typically see any variation uh, when, you come to the, when it comes to these. And we will talk about why that occurs um, in the next modules.